What's up guys, and today I have for you the Wicked Cool Jazzwares 3.75 inch scale Halo Infinite Warthog. Now before you worry, yes, I'm still going to be reviewing the other figures that I showed as well as the Red Spartan, but I wanted to review this first because it's in a box and I, I can't look at it, plus it just looks so cool, I think. I don't know, it's in a box. Although technically I'll be reviewing this Master Chief Halo because he comes with one right here. I, I, they look the same from what I can tell from now, but I'll find out when I open them. All right, don't wanna wait no more, so let's bust them open. All right, now starting with the box front, I'll give you a closer look, even though you already saw it, just for completionism. Here's the bottom with pretty much nothing on it, and then here's one side, and then the other side, and then here's the top that's upside down, and it says World of Halo, so I guess that's the line it's called. And then here's the back with the same picture again, no product shots, I'm thinking they may not have been able to get to it this year for obvious reasons. And then there's the UPC that you can scan at Target or anywhere. All right, now let's go and pull him out of the box. We'll start with pulling out Mr. Chief here. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Come on, baby. Or not. Okay, there we go, got it. It got stuck on its own awesome, apparently. All right, and here you have it, guys. The Halo Infinite Warthog and everything it comes with. These tires are actually made of real rubber and this thing comes with a little chain gun attachment and then you get a look at this little itty bitty gas can. <laughs> Just like in the game. You remember the game, right? The gameplay that everybody talked smack on, although that was semi-justified. And this chief figure is pretty sick, too. Now, it does come with instructions on how to attach the wheels and the gun turret, but come on, we're Halo players, we don't read instructions. Oh, and it doesn't come with an in-game code, what? I feel gypped. This is like the only Halo figure I've gotten so far that doesn't come with a code. But oh well, if they took the code out to put more awesome into it, then I'm okay with that. Now, one thing I do wanna point out before I start assembling everything is take a look at just how much detail they put into the undercarriage here by the wheels. It even looks like the disc brakes here you can see little pegs come out. It looks like from the tire here, see the design, how it has a clip inside? Oh, you can see the soft rubber as well. It's pretty awesome. But anyways, based on that clip design, it looks like it's gonna be pretty hard to take off, but if you have multiple ones and you leave it off, Check that, I mean, check it out. It's like one of those hogs that have no wheels and it's busted. So you know it's like when you're playing one of those levels and you're walking around you're like, oh, a warthog, finally, I don't have to walk anymore. And then you get to it and you're like, oh, it's got no wheels. I ain't driving that. So yeah, I think that's really awesome that they did that. So just buy multiple ones, or, or you can even flip it around and, and really make it look look great. You know, like when you got blown up because a Wraith tank, you know, hit you because you suck at driving or something, and you're like, oh, and then you go, and then you, you know, hit X to flip. But you get the point. But anywho, let's take a closer look at this before I slap the wheels on, because there's just too much details to leave out. All right, I lit the camera up super bright so you can see the details, so if the other stuff seems washed out, then just ignore it. But anyways, just look at the details in there. You got the little shock absorbers in there, then you got this piece. Look at that undercarriage. Look at how detailed they made the undercarriage. Just so much, I and mean, they could have just, you know, made it simple, made it flat. You just look at all these gears and stuff. Is that an engine in there? But anyway, they could have just made it flat and simple, but no, nah, no, nah, they went all out. It looks incredible. So it's like I said, you can have it without the wheels. And then look at the front piece right here. They even got these axles and other car parts. I forget the names, you know, the, the wishbone the stuff and steering and you cars guys probably know more than me. Anyways, you got the wench right up here. You got the headlights. It's like, whoo. Oh, and look, look, look. See, remember I told you about the, the disc brakes? Check that out. There's the calipers. It looks like it got two pistons there. And then you can see the rotors and you see the design of the rotors, how they always have that kind of clamped. It looks like a real rotor, basically. I don't know how to explain that. But yeah, there's the other caliper. And then on the back, looks like they have drum brakes. So it's just like, what? And of course, the undercarriage in general all around here look great as well. Lots of details just in incredible and then let's take a close look at the back here you have lots more details just like the front it's just they spared no expense for real it, that looks like the gas tank or something or maybe a fusion cell or whatnot but man just look at all that look they got the little suspension there with the little axle rods and Wish bones. I'm just throwing out a bunch of car part names that I, I think sounds about right in this area, and then hopefully one sticks. Then moving back to the top here, you got this beautiful OD green and lots of nice details just stuck on there. You can see they added some little silver brushings all over the place to give it some nice weathered look. 
Then you got the nice UNSC logo right there, more silver brushing, nice handles right there you can hang on to. Same thing with this, it's a little stick out that they glued on there that you can stand on more handles. I mean, I feel like you can probably load this thing up with like tons of Marines or Spartans. This is for the cool gas tanks. Oh, I love how they have them removable. You know, you can throw them at people and maybe shoot at them or something like in Fortnite. <laughs> Anyways, then there's this side that looks just like the other side. You got the UNSC logo again, more handles, more silver brushing. Oh man, this thing is just beautiful. And the interior is just as gorgeous as well. Look at how they just added these, looks like they're stickers. They're, still, they look great. Got the steering wheel here. They got a little LCD screen. They even added the buttons, which is crazy. You got your gear, sh probably the e-brake or something. Pull some sweet drift moves or something. There's the inside. You see there's a gap right there and then like the side, no pedals, but still, they, they tried. Then on this side too, you have that little glove compartment there. It looks like this is supposed to be a handle. Same thing here where you had the little stick out there and then your feet go in between them. Let's see, I can get the camera to focus. Yep, there you go. Just get the foot in between those. Oh, and the steering wheel here does not rotate, unfortunately, and the e-brake does not move backward either. And then here's a look at the seats, and I tell you what, it may be plastic, but it certainly looks comfy and ergonomic. And look at that, they, they even had the steel plates right there, and then it looks like a little latch or something, you know, like maybe another compartment. They really did a great job on the interior. I mean, they knew that you'd be able to see it because it's completely open, and they just, they put so much detail into it. It looks like maybe add-ons. Maybe they, they didn't buy the accessory pack, so those are those are blank. But anyways, yeah, they, they look at that. Look at the sides there. They got some extra whatever whatnots. I mean, Jazzwares Wicked Cool Toys did such a good job. Ooh, that's really bright. Okay, that's better. Not so bright. But anyways, they did such a great job on the sculpt here that, I mean, I know there's going to be some of you that are going to complain that it doesn't have enough paint, but I'm sorry. I'm just going to have to tell you right now, your complaints are invalid. I mean, it's just the truth because the paint's easy to do. Anybody can put dry brush and, you know, make it look a bit better. But if they didn't do a good job on the sculpt, you know, it's like lipstick on a pig. You could put lipstick on it, but it's still a pig. This here is like a Victoria's Secret supermarket. Model with no makeup on. All right, now let's go ahead and bring in the tires and attach the wheels because once we do that, they are not coming off, most likely. So we're just gonna pop this on right here and see how that goes. Just get a good grip there and then pull up. Let's see if it can come off actually. Oh, oh, snap! Yeah, or it didn't snap, it just caught me. Wow, it came off. Super easy. Okay, never mind. You can totally just. Be like, okay, he's in driving mode, and then you're just like, I want a broken warthog, and then just take the wheel. Wow, that is, that is, thank you, Jazzwares Wicked Cool Toys. But anyways, let's go and just put all the tires on there so we can continue with the review and all that stuff. So we got that, it goes on very easily, and there you go. You got the tired warthog, and you know, after so many miles, I guess you can just pop the tires off like so. Ooh, this one's tougher. Okay, I take it back. It, it, the back tires were really hard to come off. The front tire comes off really easy though. So, I don't know, after so many miles, you can do a tire rotation if you want, you know what I mean? Or you can just leave the tires on because, I mean, it's a warthog. It probably has some good durability on it. And for those of you out there who don't know what a tire rotation is, then, ooh. All right, now we take the antenna here that's a little bit soft and it's got a nice rounded top here so you don't poke yourself in the eye if you happen to land on it. Then we'll go and look for a hole in the back. There's a hole right there. And then you put the hole in the peg or the peg in the hole. You put the, you just put it in there like so. Wow, that was a tight fit. But anyways, there you go. Now you got the antenna and it is definitely not coming off very easily. So that, that's a plus. Then you got your gas tanks here. Three of them are exactly the same with the hole in the back there. And then one of them has the holes in the back. Here we go like that instead of the side because that one actually plugs into this side while the other one slits in right there and as you can see they are just so nicely detailed i just love that extra strip of paint that's just an extra touch of detail that just makes it so much nicer all right so we'll go ahead and plug this one into this one right here it goes in super easy then we'll take that hole there and then we'll go into that peg right there, a lack of so, it goes in kind of at an angle, and then blood angle, there's that one, and then here's the, the, okay, we'll just fast forward. And there you go, there are the gas tanks, and these ones actually kind of float, as you can see, which is kind of interesting, kind of a neat little touch there, I don't know why, it's just 
It's very fascinating. But anyways, that's what it looks like with the gas tanks. Vroom, just like just like in the game trailer. Vroom. It's so cool. And they come off pretty easily too. You just kind of pull them and then they come off. And then you have the gun turn here, which is very nicely designed. You got some nice little silver dry brushing there. Got triple barrel design right there, the UNSC logo. This little bullet guard here is nice and soft and it actually rotates ever so slightly up and down with the turret. You got some more details there. There's the connection point, then there's the handles, and then the little things that go against your chest as you go and then it comes with the chain portion, the chain gun, where the bullets travel through there and you simply plug it into the chain gun. The big part goes into the big part like so. And then the little part goes into the little part like so. Very, very technical terms right there. So that is that right there. And you have your chain gun turned and it rotates with it, which is pretty nice. And then the install is about as easy as cutting a piece of cake with a chainsaw. All you got to do is take that and then plug it right in there and bada bing bada boom. The gun turret is in the warthog. <laughs> Look at that. It looks awesome. Then it actually rotates too. It's really hard but if you want to rotate it easier just pull it out like so which is nice and then you can put it wherever you want so it's better you know angled and stuff. I think I may be having a little bit too much fun with it, but it's so cool! I love this thing! Although it doesn't rotate in a full circle, as you can see there's stop points right there. If you turn it all the way, it gets stopped right there, it gets turned all the way, it stops right there. So the only way to really turn it around is just install it backwards, like so, and then you can blast anybody following you. But anywho, it's actually, it's got a slight bit of heft to it. It's not exactly heavy, it's pretty light, but it, it feels durable, and the thing is, it's very well constructed. As you can see, there's no creakiness, there's no like, flappy little poorly connected pieces. It's just, it is a solid, it's built like a tank or a warthog. All right, and now let's review the Chief. All right, now if you couldn't find the Spartan Collection Bigster Chief, this is definitely the next best thing. The helmet sculpt is just spot on and looks fantastic all the way around. You even have the Cortana chip insert right there. And then the green looks great. They added some silver paint as well to give it a little kind of damaged look and even though they don't have that shiny kind of mirror type visor it's still shiny paint and it looks great and it's very loose actually the head pops off super easy yet strangely it holds its place when you position it so and the body is very nicely sculpted and very well detailed just like the big chief except he has more paint look at that he's actually got some brown dry brush weathering in it on top of the silver brushing as well and the little char mark and it goes all the way around you really see it in that shoulder look how beautiful that is now this is the paint job at first i thought i was going to give the big chief a black wash but maybe i'll give it a brown wash look they even got the back paint usually they skip the back it's just so well done and the rest of the arm looks great as well. They actually had details to his shoulder joint right there and his elbow. Look at that sculpting. And then they have more of that weathering, the brown paint weathering into his arm there, even onto his hand. Look at that. Just incredible detail for such a tiny figure. I mean, this is essentially the equivalent of the other chief that I got. And I mean, this, this so basically this is a $10 figure. This is a $10 figure. And then moving into the legs, the details continue. The beautiful paint job and just these don't pop out like the big chief but oh well it's no big deal got leo jumbo there got some nice inside there <laughs> squeaky joint just like the big chief i mean i guess some things never change the uh, apple didn't fall far from the tree or something but look at the details there it, it man this brown dry brushing really does highlight the details i think i really may have to do that on my big chief then there's the bottom of the feet i think they just took the big chief look at it it got peg holes but look you got tread too i think they just took the big chief skull sculpt and literally just shrunk them down to 3.75 inch and it shows now when you look at the single pack right here that i haven't opened it does have a clear window so you can see it is the exact same chief he's got the same hands both open hands just like so and pretty much the same paint job there's a little variation between paint job because these are hand painted when it comes to that weathering this one doesn't have quite as much weathering as him but i mean you could have vice versa so yeah this is the exact same chief 
as in the single pack, and he even comes with the same weapon as well. So I don't know, maybe I'll just do like a, a chief on chief on chief review or something like that, because I did get the two pack as well with the brute chieftain, so I mean, you know, chief, chief, chief review probably later on after I review everybody else. But anyways, as for articulation, it's just as off the charts as a brute Captain Craig. His head rotates in a circle and has a little bit of side to side, goes that far up and that far down. Arm rotates as well and the shoulder joint goes up a decent amount and this little shoulder armor actually is kind of soft and bends up. Hopefully it doesn't pop off like Big Chief. Then he's got the single jointed elbow that does rotate in a full circle. Then he's got the hand that rotates and here's the cool part. He has the vertical rotating hand as opposed to the horizontal. So this one is actually on both sides. This is better designed for gun holding than the Big Chief. So I, I feel like different teams design the hands here. Then he's got some waist movement as well. It's actually a separate, there's one for the waist and one for the torso pivot, although they're very minimal range, so it's hard to tell. Got some side to side as well, which is nice. And then some back and forward. And his squeaky leg goes that far forward, but not back at all. He's got good splits, thigh swivel, although it does get stuck on the armor right there back and forward and he also has the double jointed knee that goes super far back and of course the rotating foot that goes forward quite a bit way back as well and the rotating ankle then he comes with his assault rifle that has lots of nice sculpting detail as well and they actually gave it a two-tone paint they painted that top there instead of just leaving it one color which is I mean, they, they really spent a lot of money on this line. Got a little peg there, and then it's overall a little bit soft. And as for the peg, you can just plug it into his back, lock so, and then you have the rifle on his back, and he's ready to just run around without a gun in his hand. And there he is holding it actually in his hand. And thanks to that vertical hand joint, he can actually hold it correctly where it looks like he's aiming down the sights. And here's the McFarlane Halo and his assault rifle. And as you can see, the size difference is actually not that big. If you put this right there, the McFarlane is only slightly bigger. And because of that, the 3.75 inch Chief can actually hold the McFarlane's five inch figure rifle and it looks good. And just as a preview, here he is next to the McFarlane Halo figures as well as him holding the McFarlane assault rifle. But I'll go into more size comparisons and test out more McFarlane weapons when I do the solo reviews of these single packs because right now it's mainly about the Warthog. All right, and there he is sitting inside the Warthog and he doesn't sit completely flat onto the seat. As you can see, he's just a little bit big. This is probably made for the smaller figures. You have to really finagle his legs to get him in there. This is about as deep as I can get him to go. At least I can get him to hold the steering wheel though. Looks pretty decent and it's pretty accurate because he's way bigger than the normal humans so he naturally he wouldn't fit as nicely. Let me try to show you how I had to get his legs to fit in there. As you can see his right leg I had to move his foot down a little bit to clear the peg. I'll go and pull him out so you can see this is what his angle looks like. You see how his ankle's kind of down that way. This angle's a little bit there because he needed to clear this little box right here to go under there. It's actually a whole lot easier to get him in onto the passenger side right here. The legs and everything clear much better because there is no steering wheel. That's what it looks like in the passenger side. And just for comparison purposes, I went ahead and busted out the Marine. Don't worry, I'm still gonna review them. I just wanted to show you the size comparison. Now when you move his legs forward, unfortunately they kind of bow out, so you're gonna have to squeeze them in to get them in there. And you just do it like so, and he fits way way easier look at that he goes all the way back into the chair or into the seat and he's right there he can't reach the steering wheel anymore but he fits perfectly and just look at the size difference super tiny marine versus the chief which is the way it should look so it's accurate definitely made for a marine to sit in and here he is holding the steering wheel as you can see he kind of pulls away from the seat there so you can't you can't really have it perfect so i think they kind of designed it to be in between so that chief can kind of fit and that the marine can kind of fit but overall they look great great for photos great for just rolling it around the backyard or your table or whatever displaying on your shelves and stuff and here's chief on the turn right there sits very nicely his foot just pegged into the little peg right there his hands can hold the little grips there and now he's ready to blast away at the banished or more covenant or prometheans or who knows 
And here's what the Marine looks like on the turn, and he's so tiny compared to the Chief. Just look at that. But it does look like these bullet deflectors will actually work since the Marine's so tiny there. Although the Chief doesn't really need bullet deflectors because he does have his shields and then his armor, so he's he's pretty much good. And before you ask, no, the McFarlane Halo figures are a no-go. They are too big and their legs just don't have the articulation required to even bend that way nor would they fit even if you tried. Although you could put them on the turret and he kind of looks all right, I guess, but I, he's still a little bit oversized. Although you can always just pull this turret off here and have him tailgate in the back seat just like a bunch of hillbillies or something. Or you can even be nice and give Craig a ride in the back to the store because he needs some more milk. And lengthwise, it's about 11 inches long, six and a half inches high, and about six inches wide. And for some size comparisons, here it is next to the Halo Reach McFarlane Warthog. This thing is huge compared to this. This is tiny. But honestly, I prefer this much better because when it comes down to space, and especially if you want to like army build or build a set, having a smaller one is just so much better because it takes up so much less space. I mean, just look at how big this sucker is. Holy Jesus just gigantic. I mean, I thought it was a decent size before in the past, but after having this new one on there, it's just, you can definitely tell that it is a lot bigger, and this is definitely much smaller. I mean, you can piggyback ride right there. Well guys, overall this Warthog is freaking fantastic. Wicked Cool Jazzwares did an incredible job on the sculpt and the paint detail is still good even though it's minimal. It's like I said, it's a makeupless Victoria's Secret model. And dare I say, I think I may actually like it better than the McFarlane Warthog. But anywho, I will still be reviewing that Marine as well as the other figures and the Red Spartan eventually, so stay tuned for that. But until then, happy Halo hunting, and it's only about a month before the Series X comes out, and peace.